Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make this cool graphics. There's an invisible ball that moves in the background. You can kind of see it, you can kind of not see it. I made a series on introduction to creative coding. So if you want to understand more about how everything works in a more detailed way, you can check those videos out. In this coding tutorial, we're actually going to adapt another coding tutorial I did on bouncing ball to make this cool invisible ball. So first, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a grid. And I've done many tutorials already on how to make a grid using nested loop and 2D arrays. But in this video, instead of just drawing a square grid or a circle grid, we're actually going to draw a line. So first, let's start by declaring three variables, columns, rows, and size. So let's give the size at 50 pixels. Underneath the setup function, we're going to calculate columns by dividing the width by the size. And for rows, we're going to divide the height by the size. Next, we're going to draw the grid. So for let i equals to 0, i less than calls, i plus plus, j And then let's just start by drawing the square just to make sure that our code is correct. So i times size, j times size, then size, and size. So we should have an 8 by 8 grid, which is what we have here. Next, what we want to draw is that we don't want to draw a rectangle, but we want to draw a line. I'm actually going to keep this line of code here so that we know where each of the grid is. We can use the line function now. And this line function takes in four arguments. The first two arguments are the x and y location of the first point, and then the third and the fourth arguments are the x and y location of the second point. And these are the two points where we will connect them to create a line. But how we're going to approach the location of the line here is that we're going to start by finding out what is the location of the center of the grid. And then the first point would be the center location minus some length to the left and some length to the top. And then the second point will be the center location plus some length to the right and then some length to the bottom, right? And then we'll have a diagonal line that is center at the center of the grid. So how do we do that? So what is the center of the grid? The center of the grid is size divided by 2 plus i times size, size divided by 2 plus j times size. And then we have the same thing for the third and the fourth location. But if we just click play here, you can't see anything because the point is at the same exact location. What we want is that we want to also subtract this by, let's say, why don't we give it a variable called length? And then let's say length is 30, and then minus length here, minus length here, and then plus length here, and then plus length here. Okay, and you can see that because I gave the length to be 30, that's why it connects the whole grid. And it's because actually the size of the line now is at 60, right? So it's 30 from the center. So we actually want it to be smaller. So let's say 10. Okay, so now you can see that this is exactly what we wanted. We have the center point, then we subtract something to the left, something up, and then we add something to the right, and then something down. But length is now at a constant pixel of 10, and that's not what we want. We actually want to create a 2D array where we can vary the length for each of the lines in each of the grid. So we're going to, instead of writing 10 here, we're going to create a 2D array. And we're going to create this 2D array inside the draw function. Because if we create this 2D array inside the setup function, it will only be called once, and then it will not be able to change dynamically. We're going to create a 2D array by using a nested for loop.
then inside the first array, we need to first create many empty arrays, right, of the size calls, and then the value that we're going to give is going to be, let's do 10, so that right now they're all the same. And you can see that there's nothing on here yet, and that is because inside our line function here, we have to indicate the index values, right? So now we have what we had originally, but also we don't want a constant number of 10 here. What do we want? We want the value to change based on the location of a moving ball. So that's why I say that this is a combination of this new tutorial and the tutorial on the moving ball. So now let's create a moving ball. I'm going to define location X. Um, and then let's do at 100, and then location Y, also at 100. And then I'm going to give the X and the Y, which is the direction that the ball is going to move, right? So it's going to move two pixels to the right, and then three pixel down. Okay, so now that we have this, first let's draw the ball. So we're going to have ellipse of location X and Y. And then let's do the size of 30. Um, why don't we do also fill to be black? And then we want to move the circles. And we can move the circles by doing x equals to x plus dx and y equals to y plus dy. And then the third thing that we need to do is that we need to make the ball bounce from the border. So we need to check the border by using a conditional statement. So if x is more than width, or x is less than zero, then I want to change the direction of dx by negative one. Same thing as for the y direction. So if y is more than height or y is less than zero, then dy equals to dy times negative one. So let's see if this code works first. Okay, so now everything is black, and that is because we never colored the grid. So let's color this to white. And now we cannot see the ball. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move the draw function, the draw piece, to be at the bottom here. Okay, so now we can see that we have the ball, we have the lines, and we have the grid, but they're not actually doing anything together. What we want now is that this line of code is setting the size of the lines to be at a constant 10, but we actually want it to change based on the location of the circle, right? I want to find the distance between the center of the circle and the location of the grid and I can do that by using the function called dist and this is a function that takes in four arguments the first two are the x and y location of the first point that we want to find the distance between and then the third and the fourth are the x and y location of the second point that we want to find the distance in between so we're going to put x and y which is the location of the circle right and then I'm going to put um, I times size and J times size. We also want to put size divided by 2 plus to make sure that it is at the center. Okay, so let's try this. You can kind of see that the line changed something a little bit here, but it is because right now we have not scaled the value that is calculated from the equation distance here. So we can multiply the whole thing by scale. And let's set scale to be at, what if we set it at 0 
And there you go. Okay, so now that we have the working code, now let's make it a little bit more pretty. So first, we don't actually need to see the ball. So I'm going to comment this line of code out. The second piece is that we also don't need to see the grid. So I'm going to comment this out. So let's try this first. Okay. The third piece is that what if we make the size to be even smaller? Ah, so now we're getting close. So what I had in the original graphics is that I also changed the scales to be even smaller. So you can see if you change the scales to be smaller, the circle is a bit larger, right? So you can play around with the color of the background, the size of the grid, the scale here. Give it a try.